uh, hello students so here uh, we are uh, going to learn what is the concept of unsymmetrical bending so we have seen in last class what is uh, you know what is symmetrical bending what is uh, what is the definition of unsymmetrical bending so you know la in last class what is that section uh, which types of section which are contributing to unsymmetrical bending so if you remember that there are even sections which are symmetrical and which are even unsymmetrical right so we have seen this section they can experience unsymmetrical bending as well it depends on the load which is acting on it if it is acting on the same line of action okay as principal axis if it is acting in the same line of action means it will create a symmetrical bending but if it is acting in some angle that will create unsymmetrical bending so we know that every section is not symmetrical about both the centroidal axes and some sections are symmetrical only about one axis like here you can see this particular section it is symmetrical about only one uh, axis right so uh, whereas many sections as angle sections are not symmetrical about both the centroidal axis so you can see here it is not symmetrical about the both the centroidal axis so in theory of simple bending the section of the beam is symmetrical about the plane of bending okay so i repeat in theory of simple bending the section of the beam is symmetrical about the plane of the bending and the simple flexural formula that is derived like i wrote in the last previous class so you know the simple bending formula this is f or sigma this is stress right young's modulus e by r radius of curvature moment moment of inertia and this is f or sigma it is a stress and this is y distance from neutral axis right so this is the uh, simple bending formula so it is not applicable okay it is not applicable when the section is not symmetrical about the plane of bending so in such sections the principal axis and principal moment of inertia and the product of inertia are determined so we are going to actually determine the principal axis principal moment of inertia and the product in of product of inertia uh, in our maybe next uh, coming classes we are going to uh, determine that so stresses developed in such sections of a beam are dependent on these parameters these uh, those are important parameters what it is that is principal axis principal moment of inertia principal axis and principal moment of inertia okay so these are the important uh, parameters so if the load line now the load line which is acting on the beam so here load line okay load line is there if the load line on a beam if it does not coincide with one of the principal axis of the section if it does not coincide uh, with one of the principal axis of section then the bending test takes place in a different in a plane different from the plane of principal axis definitely then bending will be different like in this case bending will be different in this case bending will be different okay so this is what the definition we call it uh, we know that is called as unsymmetrical bending okay when the bending uh, takes place in a plane different from the plane of principal axis and we have seen the two reasons of unsymmetrical bending that is the section which is symmetrical about two axis like r section rectangular or circular section you can see it uh, here and uh, where the load line is inclined to both the principal axis and the section itself is unsymmetrical like angle and a channel section with vertical web and the load line along the vertical uh, any centroidal axis so here let us see this figure where we can see a beam with i section with load line which is coinciding with the principal axis so this is the i section with load where load line coinciding with the y y principal axis suppose let us call it as this is the y y 
principal axis and this i section has two axis of symmetry with both these axis are the principal axis so here if we draw a x x axis so it is symmetrical to x and y also okay so this is the with cross section and with bending i am showing here so this section is symmetrical about y y plane and the plane of the bending so this type of bending uh, is known as symmetrical bending so it is symmetrical about y y axis and it is also symmetrical about x x axis also now if we see a let us see the cantilever with rectangular section so in practical okay practical you will see such beams where suppose this is a cantilever this is its support cantilever so one end is fixed so this is particular cantilever beam this is its x axis its y axis and with the straight line it is making an angle theta the straight line it is making some angle you may call it as theta alpha so here we can see a cantilever with rectangular section so it has two axis of symmetry okay it has two axis of symmetry which are principal axis but the load line is inclined at an angle alpha okay so the load line this is this is the w is a load line okay load is acting kindly like this okay so the load line it is inclined at an angle alpha with the y y axis so this is the first type of unsymmetrical bending okay so what we have seen the uh, in uh, you know in uh, uh, just discuss in the uh, previous class also that is the first type of unsymmetrical bending so in practical cases you can see it like this okay wherever there is a cantilever so uh, this comes under first type of unsymmetrical bending now let us see a cantilever with angle section which does not have any axis of symmetry but the load line is coinciding with the y y axis and it is a second type of unsymmetrical bending now this is also cantilever here it is a cross sectional area is a rectangle but now if we consider a angle section so in this case also this this end is fixed okay this particular end is fixed so if it is a angle section like this and if the x axis is going like this this is the x axis the y axis is somewhere like this this is the load line this is x this is y so in this case this is a cantilever okay with angle section which does not have any axis of symmetry over here but the load line is coinciding with the y axis okay it is coinciding with the y y axis so this is a second type of unsymmetrical bending now there can be a one more type Uh, where you know it is channel section, and if it is subjected to vertical load passing through some centroid G, then it this member has been subjected to bending and twisting under the applied vertical load W. So here, is it possible to apply the vertical load W in such a way that the channel member will bend without twisting? And so, where should be the load W is applied? So uh, that's how where. question of unsymmetrical bending comes so different different sections like there is a channel section angle section so how we are going to consider the axis you know how the axis we will be considering how will the axis will be shifted and the original axis x y axis how it will be we will be uh, shifting it for its bending so how the new axis we are going to consider like uh, initial axis if it is so if it is the basic position of the member and then after bending it there may be there may be a change okay so we may have to consider other axis so initial axis axis suppose it is xy then we have to see that if there is a rotation then there will be new axis so we have to see the transition 
from x to x dash and y to y dash so this uh, portion we are going to cover in next class so here it was a concept of unsymmetrical bending and hope it is clear to you okay students thanks for listening to me thank you